Good day, strategy gamers, and welcome to episode 22 of our Let's Play series, War in the East 2, Stalingrad 2 Berlin Scenario. In this turn, we're going to be doing the first half of turn 12 of the campaign, um, addressing both our air planning phase and the first half of our ground movement phase. And then in the second episode of turn 12, uh, which will end up being episode 23, we'll finish up the ground combat in the south of the front, and also look to introduce a new mechanic or two, uh, time allotting. So at the very beginning here uh, with our air phase, we've had this now for about eight or nine straight turns where because of weather conditions, I've actually made the decision to just say, okay, you know what, our air armies, our air force, they're going to be a little bit on the, on the back burner. They're going to let themselves um, refresh, recuperate, get in reinforcements, get in reinforcement, um, airframes, pilots trained, etc., 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 and this is showing when we look at the overall health of a lot of our air armies. And one of the big drivers for that has been the weather. So let's take a look to see what the weather is like for turn twelve and what the forecast is for turn thirteen. As you might expect, in the middle of winter in Russia, we see that our current turn has snow, snow, and more snow all along our front lines. When we look at the forecast, we had been hopeful that given things happening in Western Europe, they might come our way and we'd have some clear weather. However, the forecast actually looks like there's a blizzard that's going to be moving in um, to our front lines. So not exactly the news we were hoping for, but by now, perhaps the expectation that we have until we get to, I would say, the summer months where we probably have more clear skies available to us, even the spring, I would say. And considering we are already February 4th, 1943, it's actually not that far away. So as usual, I've done a lot of the Air Army preparation stuff off camera as it's a little monotonous and, and kind of the same thing turn after turn. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just execute the air planning phase, which shouldn't see any air sorties necessarily happening. Um, and then we will get right into the ground combat of things. So we're already on day two, not flying any missions, this is good. In the previous turn, we did see the Germans ran a fair number of what appeared to be recon missions, and maybe even some ground attack. I wasn't quite sure and didn't get a good recap of it. Um, but they had about 150 sorties flown, which was pretty significant. Now that it's wrapping up the air execution phase, this will give us a chance now to get into our ground movements. If you remember, one of the things we introduced in the last episode was the review of supply priority. And already we can see that having an impact, right? We had said, you know what, Leningrad, your, your role is to hold the line. It is not to necessarily break through. And we now see that we have a number of units whose supply situation has gotten just a little worse right, from being of a low supply priority. It actually got a little worse than I thought it would, so I'm going to change these to just a medium priority, just to make sure things don't get out of hand. But hopefully what this means is that along our front lines, because these guys were shortchanged a little, that it then means in other areas of our front, we do have a better supply situation than previously. And if you remember from the end of turn summary from the previous episode, we saw a significant improvement in the number of units that were under supply. We went from, I think it was 130 the turn before, down to about 70. So nearly a 50% reduction. And it, it's as if the, the AI player is listening to the things that I want to do, because just as soon as I change that supply priority, and just as soon as I talk about our emphasis on breaking through here to go west towards Riga, what do they do? They bring in reinforcements to defend here, where our objective was Adritsia, and they pull units off the front line near Leningrad. They might be listening to us. I'm wondering if one of them is one of the viewers of these videos. All of that joking aside, I think we take a look at this and we say, hey, is there any opportunity for us to maybe push and break through here? just given the overwhelming situation we now find ourselves in. And I think there might be against this unit right here. 
um, where even just this one rifle core, if we do a deliberate attack, it's already um, almost three to one, a little bit closer to two to one. So I think if we take all of our forces here and attack, we really do have overwhelming odds and we might have a chance of breaking through. So we're gonna do that. And we captured the airbase there and that unit was routed. So we're not going to move into that hex necessarily this turn. We're not going to get super aggressive about this. Um, but I think that was a good opportunity for us to have taken advantage of. Now over here, to actually review battles from the last turn, the Germans had pushed us out of this hex right here. So in the first attack, they lost 2,000 men, and we actually held our lines, which was a pretty good situation. They attacked with 65,000 men. On the second attempt, they brought another 40,000 at us, and it was just over the span of the two attacks, it was simply too much for us to withstand. And we ended up having three rifle divisions retreat, and I believe all three of them retreated right here. Other than that, in the Leningrad pocket, there wasn't any action uh, for us to necessarily review. Continuing to look through the front line, we see more opportunities in which we may be able to be a little bit on the offensive, and one of them is right here, where we have two to one, getting close to three to one odds here. And I'm wondering if there isn't a weaker unit that we can swap out for a stronger one along these front lines, but there's it's really not a huge benefit. We put on fortification levels, we see the fortification level is just one here. So I think we might go ahead and attack. And they did retreat. So that was a success. And then I think what we're going to do is, which, which units were pushed back? I think it was this stack right here. So this has the 372nd. If we look at the battle recap, we see, yeah, the 372nd retreated. So I think what we're going to do is take this stack of units and we're going to move them up into this hex. We will then take these and cover the position that they just left, right? So we brought in one of our stronger units to try to um, defend the advance and brought in this to re reserve to kind of hold the line a little. I am tempted to take one of these and then pull it back if we have the movement points because then we can flip this hex to be in a friendly hex. And why that's significant is when we do get to rail repair here, um, we can actually move units through on the freight lines, excuse me. We, we can always, of course, move units, but they'll actually go over the rail line if the bordering hex is not enemy controlled. I think we're just going to be patient for a turn or two there. Over here, this stack, they're getting a little high on fatigue. They're all in the 50 range. So we're probably going to leave these guys right where they are. We had used these to attack this turn, so they're a little depleted. Continuing to look down on the front line, I'm not seeing too many options to push any advantages. They're pretty strong here just north of Lake Gilman. The big, big win that we had in our last turn was the fact that we actually managed to hold this hex, um, which, which is just such a big deal. But now comes the question of, okay, can we continue holding it? And a dilemma that we find ourselves in is that we have to um, we have to retreat these units, I feel, and pull up stronger ones to hold the line. So I think what we might do is take this 52nd Rifle Division, and we're going to move them here. So then we can take the 182nd and move them back and then in this hex we're going to move up the 380th we're going to keep going with kind of this domino effect here we're going to take the 274th off the front line and in its place we're going to pull up the 22nd guards and then lastly we have the 43rd guards which we're going to move back and then we're going to look to see what is the strongest unit we can bring up to the front line, probably the 55th rifle. Yeah, actually, the 200th rifle is just a little better off, so we're going to bring them up here. 
So now we have a pretty formidable stack with a defensive value of about 15. Right, so more than enough to handle this hex here. I'm debating we attack. That is 3 to 1. Hmm. I think we're going to attack. They held? No. No. Now, of course, I regret that a little. So now when we add up our defenses, we're really at 8. They have 16, so they have a 2 to 1 advantage. So we need to try to correct with this. So what I'm thinking is if we bring you up, and we'll bring you up, and we'll bring you up, and then we're going to advance you, advance you. All right, we're bringing up some reinforcements here. What we're going to do is we're going to take these, and even though we know we're not going to win, we're going to attack to try to deplete these units and increase their fatigue. Wow, they really held us back. I was hoping for something a little better than that. So that that's a little disappointing. Do we have enough movement points to retreat any of these units? We do have enough to move this one back. But it involves us having to move one of these units off the front line. So I think we're going to do that. And then we're going to take this 380th back. What is the strongest unit we can bring up there? Maybe the 359th? Or this 220th? I think it's the 220th. So now our defensive value is closer to... Closer to 11 or so, rough math there. Um, which means it's not going to be enough for them to probably break through. We should be able to hold the line. We're going to stay a little aggressive here, because right? I feel like we do have some type of advantage we can try to press. And doing so involves moving up. Hmm. Let's see. Going to move up the 171st. We're going to take off the front line the 336. Move up the 163rd. Move off the front line the 118th. And the 133rd to move up. So now if we take all of these. No, don't have enough there. But regardless, we've reinforced the front line a little here with this. So that's that's excellent news. These guys are so dug in, they don't really stand a chance of breaking through in any of these hexes, which is good news. What we had also been doing was we were moving this first shock army south to help with this push towards Adritza, which, my goodness, now we really need their help because they, they, have, <laughs> they have brought in an entire army to defend this pocket and it makes sense because our plan was was so perfect so obvious right if we could just push through here we put such incredible strain um on the entire um leningrad peskov to linen um pockets so let's just take a moment and look at this entire situation and think about it do we I don't know that we're going to get to a point that we can necessarily push through these hexes. Maybe we can. I mean, I, I guess... I guess we might stand a chance in some of these. So like here and here, we might be able to. But that still leaves so many that we would need to get in and around. I don't know that we have a choice other than to try. So we're going to continue moving up the third shock army. And I think you were recently deployed, and that might explain your supply situation. 
you are on refit, that's fine. Do I move the first shock army here? Because remember, we also have the 23rd tank corps that's going to join the 5th army here. I think the, and I didn't mean just the 23rd tank corps, but these, these four tank corps, they're going to join the 5th army. And I'm wondering if we use them to push south to try to get in and behind these units. I think that will be the plan. And with that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first shock army and we're going to move them here. So I'm going to take you to this hex and you're actually going to go in and behind. This entire stack now moves here. And we're going to use the first shock army to try to get in between their line here. I think this might work. Ah, uh, that's 19. Tempted to, but I don't think I will. just going to move them up and accept the fact that we might need another turn or two here. Rushing this can only end badly, so. So now what we will do, well that 9th Rifle Corps might be able to help hold that now. We'll take the 9th Rifle Corps and move them up here. And then we'll take the 33rd Rifle Division here. And you're just going to sit in reserve, I think. So we have a very defensive line here that looks like it's more than capable of repelling any of their attacks. So that's good. And, and this gives these guys a chance to, to, to get back in supply. A lot of these have fatigue levels that are in the 40s, 50 even here. So we're just going to hold a little bit this turn with some of those. These guys are in refit status. Okay. But now we need to take this tank core. And we need to start moving them over here to the 5th army. That terrain is not our friend, is it? I think it's probably best if we can stay on this rail line. As opposed to going south here. So we're going to do that. Let's just actually see, last turn, where did you draw your supply from? Looks like you drew it from Rejev. Okay. I think we're going to take you... We're going to change you all over to the 5th Army now. 5th Army. Um, fifth army, two more to go, there we go, and you go to the fifth army, okay, excellent. So it'll take a few turns, but um, I think the combination of the fifth army going south here and moving up the first shock army to try to break through this pocket here, I think it should result in us being able to get in kind of around and behind some of these units, which hopefully will then force their withdrawal. And this really is going to start to become a very difficult thing for them to contain as we move through here. Looking at these units, it scares the crap out of me that um, we only have a defensive value of 7, and they have an offensive value of... 27 here. We have no fortification level. So I'm really tempted to actually move all of these units back one here. And I think we will do so. Just because that, that worries me. So let's get them back to a fortified location. When the tank corps comes up here, they can help break through this particular hex. 
and then we can start trying to go around them by taking places like Nivel, um, which then is going to interrupt again more of their supply line. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Continuing along north of Smolensk, what do we always say? You guys aren't going to do anything. You're going to stay right where you are, all nice and dug in. No, no changes or movement for any of you. Up here, they're just too defensive, so we're, we're going to hold as we are. I think when we look at some of these units, if we can get their fatigue down in their combat prep up, for example, like on this Stalin Volunteers group, it probably will lead to us being able to break through here, but we're not ready yet. But that's fine. We'll let that be. I wonder if we don't move up and take this hex, though. I don't think we gain anything by doing so, so we might just keep it as is. Here we did get pushed back in a few areas, I think. Yeah, so here our 5th Guard mechanized retreat it. That was a pretty heavy battle. Let's take a look at that. 1,000 men lost on both sides. Fair amount of gun platforms. What was the armor involved? Stug 3s, right? So SPs going up and attacking. And lost again a number of KV-1s, which is disappointing to see. And quite a few T-34s. Over here, we actually... It looks like we held twice. So that's a great victory. Yeah, that went very well. But our armored fighting vehicles were just becoming so depleted with some of these units. Look at that. My goodness. Okay. So this, <laughs> this hex could probably deal with some reinforcements. So I think what we'll do is we'll take the 35th Rifle Brigade and we're going to move them back to here, I suppose. And then we're going to take the 415th Rifle Brigade and move them up. So that should really help with the defensive value, but we still need more there. The 110th Rifle we're going to take back here. And I think we're going to take the 1st Guard, excuse me, 1st Guard Cavalry Corps and move them up. There we go. So now we're looking at defensive value more around 1617, which should be enough to continue to hold this hex. Good news there. Here, these units really feels like with some of these we can push. Let's see. So these have no fatigue at all. This entire stack, no fatigue. So if we move them here, and we move this entire stack here, if we attack, nope, not enough. Okay. Let's take the 155th here. Third mechanized here. And the 134th rifle will go up as well. Alright, starting to just build out this front line a little bit more defensively than we have. I'm gonna take you up to here. So if we take all of you and attack, it's 43 to 7. Feels like a fight we can win. Let's do it. So they retreat it. Good stuff. Now, does it make sense to take off, say, 29th guard? We don't have enough movement points to do so, but the 415th we can take off. And we're going to move down the 247th rifle. And this HQ unit is going to just move up. X, I think. This fifth guard belongs all the way down here, my goodness. Where's the fifth guard? It's right there. The 29th army is what it belongs to. Okay. Let's 
think we will bring you here just to be ready. We need to build up some combat prep and reduce some fatigue. Okay. You might as well sit on your HQ if you're going to sit there. Same comment to you. Okay. All right, then. Quite a bit going on. I don't know that we have enough to attack and break through here. That infantry division so well dug in. So I think we have to continue looking down our front for more opportunities. Here we see a defensive value of 14. We almost have 3 to 1. It's pretty close. Question is, do we then open ourselves up to counterattack if we do that? Yeah, because this hex is not as strong as I would like it to be, but one of the reasons is that it's so encircled. Hmm. So I think what would probably be best is if we take, like, yes, this 82nd Rifle Division, you get the heck out of there. And instead, we're going to take the 58th Rifle Division and move you up. There we go. Now in this entire stack, you also have the 344th. It's not going to be a huge trade-off if we do that, so we're going to leave it be. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Continue to think this is probably the answer to Smolensk is right here, pushing back here. Uh, I don't think it's going to come from the north, but we'll see how things pan out. And honestly, it's, it, it's a priority. But I think if you look overall, the top two priorities on the entire map is this push over to Riga, right, which we were trying to cover earlier, and the Stalingrad situation and reinforcing these supply lines to start circling Rostov. I think those are the two largest priorities. Everything else, there may be varying levels of importance, but nothing trumps those two, I don't think. So we continue to look, so we had the option of pushing back here. It's still tempting, honestly. What's the math now that we move that one up there? Actually got a little worse because we can't use it in the attack. Is there... I don't think there's anything obvious we can do here. If we just took these two units... Yeah, I don't think we're going to do anything. So I think we're just going to continue looking down the line to see what else might be an option. Um, this pocket continues to be a bit of a holding pattern because of how we've already pushed into it so much. If we look at it too, there's not really much we can do that interferes their supply lines with one push one way or another. Um, because it... it We've already taken this crossroads and all of this, so I think we'll just leave all of this just as it is. Right here, though, we did find some luck last turn in pushing through, so we might keep going here. Um, because if we can get in and around behind these units, that, that might have some significance. So let's take both of you and attack. Maybe we don't even do a hasty attack. Just... Yeah. Okay, so they retreated. So now what I'm going to do... That rifle division. I think we're going to move up. I'm going to take you. Move you there. you here. You come over. And which of these two do we move? Both are pretty equal. Which one's more of a threat for counterattack? Probably this hex. We're going to do the weaker one here. Is that the weaker one? Let's see. Yeah, the 323rd is weaker. 
So we're going to move you there. All right. Yeah. That's looking nice. That's looking nice. Now they might, <laughs> they might now counterattack with these three units against this. It's probably pretty likely. Probably going to happen. Not too much we can do about it. But if they don't, um, if they instead decide to pull back, that's going to be huge for us. Really, it will be. I also wonder if we don't take one of you and move you up here. This defensive value of each of you is about six. No, we, we need to keep each of you there to prevent them from counterattacking. So that's fine. And remember, too, that we have all of these reinforcements that have come down. So let's get these off the train. Off train, off train. All right, so now they are all off the train and we need it to move, I think it was four units. And we need to move four units to the, um, which army is this? The 61st army. So I think we're going to take you here. You here, you here, and which one do we want? You here. Just need to double check 61st Army. Okay. So we're going to assign you guys to the 61st Army. of these, 61st Army, 61st Army, and 61st Army. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Don't wanna, I don't, I don't know if I wanna advance into that quite yet. As is the defensive value is about 12. Whereas they have 30 in terms of offensive value. So I don't think we're going to. And then down here, we are going to move you guys up. Yep, they're all gonna come up here. What's our total value? I'm trying to think if it's worth attacking here to keep them on the defensive, right? I think we're going to. Okay, so they retreated. Good. Good, good, good. Move you up. Look at this. Progress, progress being made. All of you guys are just holding the freaking line. That's, that is the priority. You could get overwhelmed any turn here. Oof, I worry about you. But I think we're going to force them to decide, do they want to attack fortification level 3 hex? Yes, no. Right? That's, that's what we're forcing them into in terms of decision making. And this one is actually even more vulnerable, so we are going to keep the stack of two here. We maybe take one of you, though, now that we have some reinforcements, bring you over. I think we might, actually. So let's take you, this rifle division, up to reinforce the line here. We're also going to take you, rifle division, to reinforce the line. And then we can move you down. you down. Very good. Very good. Okay. The press is on near Orel. Uh, we continue to have some success here. They might counterattack. We'll see. They might counterattack. We will see. We actually have it's two to one here, so that's not terrible. Okay. 
this is going to be really interesting. I'm, I'm really curious what's going to happen to this unit. Um, my gut tells me they'll counterattack, but they might also really deteriorate their position here, and that might open it up for us to then reposition some forces and push them out of this hex. And if we can break through by pushing them out of this hex, I think this all collapses and we can just have this huge swarm coming south here. So I'm, I'm optimistic looking at that. Should we, yeah, should we be moving some units up here? I feel like maybe we should. They don't have any to move up other than the 30th guards. And their fatigue situation is not bad. So I think we will move them up. And then that really, really helps with the defensive position. And again, opens it up to where we're in a good good spot to counterattack should they try to do anything. Good. Happy with what's happening here in Arel. Pushing back this unit too should put some pressure on them. Right? Just a bit of a warning shot, right? To say, you know, don't don't try coming at us completely here. Now they can only really attack from this hex because by the time they move into either of these two, they would have exhausted the majority of their movement points and probably combat prep, um, which really just means it needs to be a frontal assault from these units. In that math, I'd like it's only two to one. I think they would be looking for better than two to one. Any rivers or anything to our advantage doesn't look like it. So that, that kind of sucks. Let's maybe take, though, and see if there's not support units we can assign that might help them. Yeah, so let's let's attack like this anti-tank regiment. We can do the same with the 31st here. Oh, we already did the 31st. Let's do the 63rd. Let's also assign an anti-tank regiment. And then up here, we already have a tank brigade. I'm almost wondering if we don't return that so that way. We don't get to it. Mm. I have to leave that be. Okay. Okay. Nothing to be done here. We already kind of reinforced the line, right? Because of how strong of forces they're mounting. It's actually a little worrisome looking at it along this entire front line, just how strong they're getting. I feel like they continue to bring in more forces here. And I wonder if this is all part of the buildup of things around Kursk, or is it just a repositioning where they're moving units north because they're fearful of using a REL? Or, again, my original hypothesis at the beginning of the episode, one of you listeners is actually the AI that I'm playing against, is more and more what it feels like sometimes. I say, yeah, yeah, this attack looks fine, we'll be able to break through quite easily, let's go for it. And then what happens? Disaster. Disaster happens after I say those things. Going to keep that pretty well fortified here. Yep, we're fine there. Hmm. Have an opportunity to break through here? I don't think so. I think we're going to let things like that tank core continue to recover fatigue and build up combat prep. Speaking of that, actually, we might... going to take you off the front line, right? Just to help with that. Because you're pretty valuable when you get up to full strength. What's your TOE look like, actually? Okay, not too bad. That's pretty good. It's pretty good for a frontline unit. And we still have plenty here to defend. We actually outnumber them if they were to try to attack. Here, right, screams opportunity. Am I reading that the same way you are? I think so. So do we want to... I think we want to keep this unit kind of as is to protect against a counterattack here. And I think we want to take these two and attack the deliberate attack, which is three to one. Oh no, they had an Italian mountain division helping them. That's not good. So they're going to end up holding, which they did. Okay, well we can't have that, so let's attack again, three to one. They retreated this time. Excellent. Now the fortification level is removed from that hex as well. Good stuff. Um, do we move up? 
I think we might move up here, actually. Yeah, we're going to move up. I'm actually going to bring you this tank core here. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to move you down here because I feel like next turn you might have some opportunity to push here. Right? And doing things like cutting off this rail line would be huge. So yeah, let, let's set some targets there. Over here, they're pretty, pretty strong with the reinforcements they've brought in. We have to go down a little further to find more opportunities. Here we have a two to one already. Here they only have three defensive value. So certainly something we could probably break through if we used both of these. These units in good condition. It looks like they are. So what if we did take all four of those and attack? That's 14 to 4. So it's 3 to 1. I think we'll go ahead and attack. Ah! The Romanian division was helping them, but still they retreated. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yes, they're, they're having some holes in their line here. They're struggling, but now we have about 50 fatigue on most of these, so that's something to watch out for. I wonder, it's only 2 to 1, fortification level 2 is probably not going to be worth it. And we're crossing over a river, so no thanks. We're going to pass hard on that. Just where we can, we'll press for advantages here. Continuing down the line, we really probably don't have enough to push here. Same here. I mean, we have a lot of units, but they're in lower supply. Moderate to high fatigue. Combat prep needs to recover for a lot of these. So we're, we're going to let this line here continue to rest. But remember, I think it was from our last episode we were talking about, if we can, if we can move this entire line by two hexes up, that then gives us a rail line, right? Coming from up here down all the way to help with our reinforcements here. That would be pretty pretty notable if we could achieve that. So we'll keep looking at areas where we can try to push back. So, oh, are they massing for a counterattack here? That 7th Panzer Division, my goodness. We easily have enough to defend the two hexes that we're sitting in, though. The question is, how does it look after we do some counterattacks? We take all of these against the Flieger Division. It's actually not enough, and I think we ran into that last turn, too. So you might have to hold there. If we take these units, it's not quite enough there. I think we moved you off the line. Are there any battles down here? I can't remember. Doesn't look like there were. I want to make sure we didn't skip recapping any battles from counterattacks the Germans had. Doesn't look like there was. So I wonder if we don't move over some of these third guards units to help with this line. Like if we don't take this entire stack and just move them up here. I think we might do that. I'm going to take all of these and move them right here. Our defensive value is plenty against these. We're going to attack and push back this Italian or Hungarian light division. Actually, we're going to do a hasty attack here. So we push back the Sturm Brigade. Now we're going to do a deliberate attack. Nope, don't have enough points. Fair enough. We're just going to move you up one. The stack. Yep, move them up one. So now we kind of have that defensive line on the other side of the river. You want to move up just here at first. Okay. I don't know that we're going to get any more aggressive than that. We definitely said this is our defensive line in the previous um, episode because they actually had forces all along this rail line. 
And at first, I had thought, okay, are they going to try to create a defensive line on the rail line? But now I wonder if it wasn't them evacuating units for the defense of Rostov. That might be a more logical conclusion to what they were doing. This is, again, that fine balance of um, aggressive and supply concerns that we have to consider. Let's take a quick look before we close out the episode. If we had any reinforcements or withdrawals we need to consider. And it looks like we did have two rifle divisions that came in. Let's see where they went. They went to Moscow. And I don't think that these were two that we had that we had allocated, that we had pulled from the reserve box. And I'm wondering, looking at the front as a whole, where it might make most sense to put these guys. My head keeps coming back to the offensive with Riga. I keep thinking that this is actually going to be key. Our ability to push through here. And I'm wondering if two infantry divisions would be helpful to have down here. So, for example, I think they might be a good fit in, say, the first shock army as they try to expand through this gap in the line. It's tempting, isn't it? Yeah, I... Even the 5th Army, I know we just added those tank corps. What are we actually looking at? Oh, we are way over. Oof. That's not good, I didn't see that. I'm going to have to reassign some of you to the 4th Shock Army. Which isn't the end of the world. But we'll deal with that in another, another episode. So we could move the rifle divisions here to help with the Riga push, but it is starting to look a little bit like a, we're a little oversaturated and we're, we're already running into just supply issues of getting enough supplies down these two rail lines. So are they maybe more useful if we could apply them in some of these gaps in their line down south here? Kind of like how we keep talking about if we could simply move this entire front by these two hexes. That then gives us a supply line all the way south to help with our push on Rostov. So I think we're going to move them down here. And I think we will have them report to... Which of these HQs do we want to do? We need to move you up, I think. And you're still within range. You're actually over your command capacity. So I think I might attach you to the 40th army and have you kind of fill in this gap right here and start pushing here. That's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go back up to Moscow. I can find it. Here we go. We're going to take these two rifle divisions, turn on the rail mode. We're going to move you south to this HQ. Very well. So let's get you down there. And then once they arrive, we'll attach them to the correct HQ unit. I think this makes a lot of sense because it, the, the push on Riga, right now we have such a concentration of forces that adding two more infantry divisions feels like it's just going to be stepping on each other's toes in that little pocket that we're trying to break out of. Stalingrad is a long ways away, and on the Stalingrad front, if anything, we actually have too many men encircling Stalingrad and pushing south of Stalingrad, right, where our issue isn't men, it's supplies. Uh, so I think just a, a kind of more tactical approach of applying these two divisions to um, this 40th Army might help us actually, it might just be enough to tip the balance and allow us to start taking these hexes, because... Unless they move something, <laughs> this is not a focus for them, right? They, they are barely defending this line. So we're going to assign these auto to the 40th Army, so they both went. And then the next turn we will unload them from the train, but right now we don't have enough strategic movement points to do so. We need more than 100 to do so. So 
that's all done. We left off right down here, um, near the Don and the Donetsk rivers on the Stalingrad front. What we'll do in the following episode is we will continue our press on the Stalingrad pocket, our movement of these armies towards the encirclement of Rostov, right? So we're actually going to start to get a little aggressive about building a perimeter around Rostov and cutting off the city. And then we'll also see to start looking at what is what is some type of assault on the Crimea look like. But for now, I think this is going to wrap up the episode. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to give it a view. Should you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please be sure to leave them in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to answer it. And if you feel like you can like or subscribe to the channel or the videos, it certainly helps get the name of the game out there and helps those newer players who may feel a little um, overwhelmed by the size of the 520-page manual and the mechanics that exist in this huge uh the game that we are trying to tackle in this series. And with that, thanks so much. Have yourselves a great day, strategy gamers. Bye now.